Okay, welcome to this special edition of the SMI community meeting. Today, we're going to focus on and talk about a multi-cluster discussion as captured in issue 212. And um, if you haven't yet, please uh, add yourself to the, the Google Docs I, I shared early on in the chat. Um, that's uh, always super useful. And uh, I don't know if you all had a chance to have a look, and, 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 and if not, uh, you might want to do it now for, for a few minutes uh, worth. Of um, if not, I, I, or I, I can also share the, the um, do a quick screen share if I'm allowed. Okay, I'm not allowed. Uh, can someone else who is allowed to share their screen uh, open the, the issue 212 and uh, share the screen so that we can have a look at that together? You should be able to share your screen now. I made I sure. Can share? Okay. Uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Um, I want a window. Um, Google Chrome. That looks great. How about that? Can you see um, my screen here? Yes, we can. It's a little small for me. Um, that might well be. How about now? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Thanks. Cool. So, um, Nick, do you want to say something or? Um, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope you can hear me all okay. I'm trying to use my headphones and I'm not that good quality. So, so just to kind of give a little context, one of the things that we've been asked a number of times around that, what about multi clusters? So I think there's a number of facets on that, but the, the fact that SMI configuration should take advantage or should consider multi-cluster capabilities, um, and, but also to, to kind of come up with or to promote a way that leads uh, a way of many different vendors to come together to work towards a single specification that, that benefits everybody. So we created this issue just to kind of like set a little bit of context and to, you know, to, to, to capture some feedback around whether this would be something that the community would, would like to see. And if so, you know, some of the things that they would like to see and how SMI would be able to, to help with this. So that issue, you know, predominantly just set out the problem as, as I saw it and, and a lot of you know, really good folks adding adding their opinions in there and um, yeah that, that's just the kind of the context right right Th thanks a lot and i think that that makes and, and summarizes the the issue at hand uh, perfectly well i will point out in case you haven't seen it yet and i think it is this one let me double check um Yes, that's the one. So if you are not familiar with, with that cap, which the, the cap is in itself, I think, relatively recent, a uh, couple of... Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Looks... So, so just, yeah, I've, I've not responded to this, but I think there's a differentiation between service mesh multi-cluster and Kubernetes multi-cluster. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think you've got different, you know, different considerations when it comes to actually running a workload and controlling the communication of a workload. So uh, I'm not 100% certain that, this is my opinion, um, I'm not 100% certain that the sort of the, the, the Kubernetes cap around multi-cluster is particularly applicable to this issue, but maybe that's a good topic for discussion as well. I uh, tend to agree with Nick <clears throat> on this. Um, so this, um, a spec from Kubernetes, right? So depending on how we are thinking about the service mesh, right? So one of the, without getting even before getting into the details of the Kubernetes spec, right? So if we are thinking in the service mesh as something that uh, goes beyond Kubernetes or is above Kubernetes in terms of where it sits, in terms of the infrastructure construct, then right. obviously, uh, you know, Kubernetes spec is not gonna do the work. Um, and uh, even if it does today, which, you know, I don't know, right? We have to sit down and see which are the requirements and how well does it match. But um, there can be divergences in the future, 
right? Because the Kubernetes spec is going to be focused on Kubernetes and there is going to be a strong Kubernetes community focusing and giving priority to the Kubernetes use cases. Right. I guess before we guys dive too deep into wisdom implementation, it looked like Michelle was asking in chat about if we have any like specific like high level goals for this meeting in terms of like what we're trying to accomplish with this discussion. I think I think ultimately as, a, as an end goal for this meeting should be a a broad agreement on whether we we believe that SMI is the right forum to take this this further forward. I'd be I mean I I'd be surprised if we can kind of find a solution. Um, in this meeting, but but I think the thing that SMI does bring to the table is that you have a group of individuals that represent the, the major players in the service mesh space who are already collaborating together. And um, right. so I can only speak for for myself and, and for for us, uh, you know, not, not for for the whole group, obviously. But um, what I would like to see out of this, either we, we get it done today or there is a follow-up meeting, uh, is on the one hand uh, answering the question, should we be doing that, right? It could be that we say, nope, not going to do it. And if yes, then uh, the scope, of it, right? Is it uh, indeed multiple Kubernetes cluster? Is it cross compute? So, you know, it could be a a monolith running on, on a VM uh, wanting to communicate with uh, or discovery or whatever uh, with, with some containerized microservice with some Lambda function or whatever, right? Um, so do we want, should we be doing it? And if yes, um, what is the scope? Is it purely Kubernetes clusters? Then there is, in my understanding, quite some overlap with what, what the CAP is, is referencing. As far as I understand the CAP, I'm not saying that I expert there uh, didn't play play around with it that much uh, it's very early days um but that's that would be my expectation should we go around and, and see what others think uh because like I, at least like search has said something um but i don't know michelle blake uh, are there other expectations in terms of what should that meeting yield in an idle world from my perspective, I think what you and um, Nick laid out uh, in terms of goals makes a lot of sense to me. Um, if there is some opportunity and if we feel like this is the right time, I'd, I'd really love to hear uh, different experiences. Um, Sneha and Delian from our team have been working on a multi-cluster solution for OSM. Um, and I'm sure there are others who have um, either at least done a POC or have implemented some multi-cluster solution for their own implementation. And it'd be really great if we could align on, okay, what are the problems that, what, what are the common things that we have to kind of like uh, right. figure out? But that may actually be even deeper than what we wanna, what I've heard we wanna do today. And so I don't wanna get too in the weeds. If, if the conversation lends itself to that, then that's great. But if not, it's okay. Okay. Blake, do you want to share something? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Nick's commenting here in the chat, and I think um, his comments align with my views is I think from what we're seeing is that service mesh is more than just Kubernetes. Um, a lot of, you know, organizations that I speak to uh, are using ser service mesh today. Sometimes it's things like, you know, console, uh, across multiple Kubernetes clusters and in different parts of the business that might be using other service mesh solutions. And what they're commonly looking for uh, across these business units or even sometimes geographies is a way to connect those services together, to make those services accessible, um, discoverable, and then and, you know, provide secure connectivity uh, across these trust boundaries, if you will. So I, I, from my perspective, this is definitely much larger than just multiple Kubernetes clusters and services needing to talk to each other. It's um, more about interoperability between uh, either isolated islands of the same mesh or, or the same mesh product or between service mesh solutions. Cool. Mike, you, you looked like you, you also wanted to say something. It's like, oh, when, when is it my turn? Do you... Uh, yeah, I guess mostly just that um, in terms of like how this relates to like multi-cluster, I feel like there's like two distinct cases worth considering. Like one is 
geo redundancy between clusters of having like two separate clusters deployment, like limited blast radius, limited uh, failure capacity for services that are like logically the same identity. Uh, and then, the, and I believe that is closer to like what the multi-cluster uh, Kate's PEP is focused on. Uh, and then like separate from that, there is a, like federation between independent clusters that may have services with the same name that are like logically set like distinct, like managed by different teams, different parts of an organization, uh, different organizations potentially. Okay. Okay, agreed. Yeah, I, I, I don't see anything uh, then, <laughs> objective. <laughs> yeah, and, and then uh, I, I guess just like also like looking historically of like, uh, like Hamlet was clearly like an early attempt at something like this. Like, um, was there something missing? Was there something like misaligned with uh, how that ended up uh, going in practice? Like, what can we learn from that and apply towards like what we're trying to solve this time? Thank you. Then let me let me try it with a, a straw man in, in the or straw person, whatever um, makes more sense. Uh, proposal in the sense that so far, at least the people who spoke up so far, uh, I haven't heard anyone objecting, saying like, oh, that's that's an awful idea. We should not be doing that, right? It doesn't make sense or whatever. So let me propose, um, and that's ma mainly for scribing because I, oh, sorry, Dylan or D D Dillian, sorry. If I'm yeah, Michael, I didn't want name. to interrupt you. I'll, I'll sure, go please, after, go after you finish. No, please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Oh gosh, you are onto something incredible. Um, Okay, so I, I actually, my gosh, I'm so sorry that I'm interrupting. I wanted to hear what you, what you were going to say. Uh, so one thing that uh, as a practitioner coming from trying to develop open service mesh, and this is in our GitHub repo, I've been thinking about multi-cluster, and I focused on one particular scenario, and I really appreciate you that you want to split up the various kind of topics. Uh, I think that all of them are important, and we could probably work on them kind of in parallel. For instance, um, uh, federation and bringing in various different payloads. Yes, I want to bring in a VM. At the same time, one particular scenario that I'm focusing on, and I struggle because SMI doesn't uh, doesn't have that yet, is I want to have two clusters and essentially use them as um, just increase the capacity of my existing cluster, right? And so have right. one service across two clusters, two pods on two different clusters, same service. And SMI doesn't have that. And so in my mind, I'm thinking I can work probably on SMI to make SMI that. In parallel, I can also start thinking about how do I bring in a VM? And that's kind of a similar, but but a different problem, right? And both of them can probably, they're two different forks, um, not really orthogonal right. to each other, but could be worked in parallel. And so I'm really focused on that. Uh, two clusters, same service at, on both of them. Got it. Cool. I think that's it. It's something that folks folks would want to do, and I, and I see the the problem is twofold. I think one is that we we have to come up with a a way of supporting multi cluster with it within SMI configuration. So in the same way as you have the the, sort of the concept of namespace, you have the concept of cluster. I don't know. Yes. You know that. Like, let's let's not get into into the solution space right now. I, oh, I just no, want to like get, take, was, take it step by step. Is, For now, just yeah. Hearing, is there any objection to yes, we should be doing it? And and if that is not the case, then we can say, all oh, right, this is our position. We want to do it. Then it's a matter of how we scope it, what do we focus on, whatever. But let, let's let's before we get into you know what what exactly should we be doing? Should we you know using this versus that? Is there anyone else on the call that I may have overlooked or overheard or whatever who has an opinion and might you know have an opposing saying like no, this is not a good idea, you're not a good you know, use of our time or whatever, um, then sp speak up now or forever be silenced or whatever the, the official words are. Just because Sneha has been working on this, I just want to yeah. ask Sneha, do you have anything to add here? Uh, no, nothing at the moment. Okay, great. thanks. Cool. Then then I would put forward the, the straw, straw person proposal saying um, the, uh, at least the people who are here, I, I take it might not be everyone, so we can go back to, to the entire uh, SMI group and saying like, we say, we, we recommend that we indeed uh, want to do that and, and should be doing that. Um, and, and we can now move forward to the, to the scoping part. Uh, but I, I, I don't see the screen, I have, I have the screen share on. So if, if whoever scribes that or volunteer to scribe, wants to put that down and then we can essentially resolve that one and say, yes, we 
um, we have one concrete outcome of today's meeting. We we support that um, we actually want to to uh, take on that challenge in whatever form uh, or shape. Okay, so is that uh, are there any objections to this proposal to this um, proposed resolution of of the question? Should we be doing that in whatever form? Going once, going twice. Okay, then we take that as yes, we want to do that. Then the question is scoping. What what exactly are we looking at? Our um, uh, what Nick called heterogeneous workloads there, um, what I usually call as, as cross compute. Um, like, where do we want to draw the line? Do people have any uh, preferences, any uh, customer based data points that we should be focusing on one or the other? Is that something that we can actually meaningfully <laughs> discuss in 10 minutes or do we need a follow up? Like, what, what, what are, how can we approach this coping? Any ideas? Any? I mean, I think the way that I see it is that other the practitioner, if I have workload in, in an application, I need it to be able to communicate with my other my other workload. Now, if you look at the non-service mesh context of that, I might have a React app running in a Kubernetes cluster. I might have a a banking gateway which is running in an IBM box or something like that, sitting in some data center somewhere. Right. Might will have a bunch of microservices or a bunch of monolith running in my IBM. They all connect together and I connect them together with my you know the standard sort of networking protocols. Now when you put the service mesh as a layer on top of that, you you're obviously in some ways disconnecting those applications because you you're you know you're running this higher level higher level network on top of your your base network, which gives you the reliability and security. So I still need to facilitate that same communication. My my IBM Z needs to be able to communicate to my my VM and my Kube cluster needs to be able to communicate to the, the VM and the IBM. So all of the workload that, that can be can be part of the service mesh needs to be adopted as part of the, the specification. And while that my is obviously at the present so Kubernetes centric. We, we have to consider workloads outside of Kubernetes because they need to be enabled in order to support it. Right. So what I hear from, from you, and I literally mean here because you're, you're having a re really bad connection today, is you're in favor of supporting heterogeneous workloads cross compute environments. That, that's what I, I... I would more say it around the other way that I wouldn't support anything that wasn't heterogeneous. So I, I think I wouldn't wait, wait, wait. That's co too common. You you would not support anything that is not like. Can you can you say yeah. it simple? I think pure Irish people, if, you know, can. If, if the scope of this specification was purely Kubernetes, which means Kubernetes, I wouldn't support that as a specification because I don't believe it's far enough. That I understand. Thank you. That I understand. Uh, any other uh, opinions? Ideally, not using double negation, please. Any other uh, opinions or, or preferences like in support or opposing what, what Nick just said? I take silence in general as agreement, unless you <laughs> you have a strong opinion that we should- so one, one thing, maybe one thing I want to highlight, right? I, I support that statement from, from Nick. <clears throat> um, so one, one thing to consider uh, if, if we were going into that direction, is um, which are the problems we want to solve, right? If we, if we support this connectivity, connectivity is only the basics that we need. That is discovery and connectivity are the two things that the minimum uh, viable product, I would say. Um, but then there's more, right? So depending on how do we understand this concept of uh, connectivity and security and the service mesh and so on, um, there are more or less that uh, we may want to do, right? So think about if I connect a workload and if I discover and connect 
workload between Kubernetes and non-Kubernetes environments, let's say cross runtime, mm -hmm. a are we also thinking in the, in addition to discovery and connectivity? Are we also thinking in the, you know, monitoring, this instrumenting these workloads in some way? Because in the end, when we look into the service mesh, what we have now, our workloads are instrumented, right? So we have a sidecar instrumenting them. When we are looking outside of the service mesh, in some cases, these workloads are instrumented, right? If we if we go to to Kuma, for example, they are instrumenting the workloads. But if we go to other service meshes, they might not be instrumenting them, right? And they are considered like external workloads, pretty much like if we are doing egress filtering, right? So what we are putting on the top is really, if we are doing only discovery and uh, and uh, a, a routing, what we are doing really is like a, a, a uh, um, directory service, right? So, this is also something we have to take into consideration. That is, to what extent are we? Uh, is, I, is... I agree in terms of scoping. That I, I would expect, as as you know, as a user, if I look at that, that it clearly tells me uh, this is in scope, this is out of scope, right? It says, you know, as as we had now, and I didn't hear any objections. Uh, it is not community specific. It is across uh, different compute. It is uh, across different uh, heterogeneous workloads. Um, I don't have a strong opinion right away uh, what should be and should not be in scope beyond, you know, should, for example, should we explicitly uh, strongly standardize on, on anything observability related or not, right? Um, I think what is important is that, that, that we're very explicit about it. We say clearly, you know, um, we do or do not take... Um, security related things into into consideration right we we you know yes it is in scope to be you know able to identify a you know a workload or whatever it is out of scope to do i don't know some some cert management or, or rotation or whatever right we, we need to be very very explicit about that absolutely no doubt but i think it's still a little bit too early and then I, I always have the feeling especially people who already have done work in that area that want to jump very very quickly to the solution space. And I, I, I'm an engineer myself. I, I, I want to do that as well. Uh, but I want to always make sure that we actually work backwards from what, what uh, people out there need. And, and you know, if you have been working on Hamlet, for example, then obviously you're representing your stakeholder there. You're representing already uh, more or less indirectly what people, what customers, uh, what users want. No doubt about that, right? Don't get me wrong. Uh, all I'm saying is let's not directly jump to, you know, a discussion where, you know, should we be using Spire or should that be, you know, we, we need something from scratch, but spiffy compliant or whatever, right? Let's not get there. Let's first define what is the scope. And, and you know, we only have three minutes left. I'm aware of that. But if we could at least um, slice one bit of that and, 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 and if there is no objections that we capture this um, agreement or this, this uh, you know, yeah, in, in, in the group that we actually want to address heterogeneous workloads. I, I would be very happy if we, if we were able to define that today or discuss that today and wrap that up and then use another meeting, either again dedicated or, or next time um, to, to address the, the next scoping, like what should be in scope, what should be out of scope. That's it. Possible. Does it make sense to uh, split them and have one group multi-cluster only work on point one and one group only work on point two? Are we, are we, we solving two problems? We, like. we, can, we can have multiple working groups. We can have any any setup. I, I, I don't have any you know master plan there. I just want to make sure that we are actually moving forward, that we are actually getting results. And for that, we need some general agreement. If, if the majority of people here thinks that heterogeneous workloads is something we want. And again, I haven't heard anyone objecting to it. How we go about it, how we implement it, that's, that's the next step, right? At least to me. But I, I want to make sure that we use the time that we have to get an agreement on these basic things. And, and again, is, is there anyone on the call at least who has an argument against heterogeneous workloads? So it's like, you know, we should be only focusing on Kubernetes, for example. Going once. Going I think it's twice. important, but I think we just recognize that it's uh, potentially expanding the scope of SMI uh, in like a non-trivial way. It absolutely is, absolutely, yeah. 
No, no, I mean, that's, <laughs> yes. I, I think something else that, you know, I, I was hearing that I just want to call out is whether it's, uh, you know, a single runtime or multiple runtimes, I think it's also important to separate, are these environments under um, common administration of a single entity or are these Excellent. separate administration, two different entities that are trying to connect services? Very valid, yes, very valid, absolutely, absolutely. Um, can I come back to, to Mike's um, comment or is, is, I don't know, is it an objection per se? Like I, I'm it's not, not, it's not an objection because I think that it's important. I, I just think that it's worth recognizing that it is like a substantial oh, yeah. increase in scope. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's why I'm so careful about it. It's like, I think everyone on the call is aware of that <laughs> by implication, this, this dramatically not changes, but enhances and, and enlarges the, the scope. Absolutely, that that's goes without saying, yeah. at least to me. Um, cool, then I, I would, again, put that forward to like um, the, the group present today uh, understands that or, or supports the, the heterogeneous workloads. And what I would say the best way to, to wrap that up for today is we have at least two concrete outcomes. Yes, we want it. And yes, we see a heterogeneous and I would uh, nevertheless, essentially go back to the, to the full group uh, next week and, and present that saying like, you know, are there any objections? If that's not the case, then we can move forward and then talk a little bit more um, about what is in scope, what is not in scope, and how we organize our work. Uh, should that be, you know, different working groups or whatever, how, however we want. And we need leads, right? We need tech leads. We need a number of, of organizational things. But for now, uh, it's, it's still, I think, a little bit in the scoping and getting everyone on the same page um, in terms of support uh, for that activity. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for this wonderful discussion and your input. Um, what is the cadence of this group? Should we uh, plan next meeting sooner than later? Sooner? We probably? have usually every two weeks, but we could, and that's something I'm looking towards, uh, Michelle. Can we speed um, it up? By extension, but that we, yes, if we could, by, you know, get CNCF that we essentially use every other week as a dedicated um, multi-cluster, multi-whatever uh, working group session, that would be awesome, right? Then we would have the, uh, like the cadence every other week, it would be dedicated to that. And then people who actually want to work on that show up. And then every other week, it would be general SMI for whatever we, we are usually discussing. So um, I guess that's, if I may ask, uh, Michelle, for that, if that's something we, or wh whoever, Richard, or whoever uh, has a liaison with, with uh, CNCF, if we can have this, this time slot, like, like we did today, exceptionally, if we can kind of like regularly get that. Michelle says, I'd be supportive. I'm not familiar with how to schedule it in chat. We, we can we can do that yeah. offline with, with, with maybe Bridget, maybe like whoever we need to awesome. bribe or ask or back or whatever. <laughs> We it is such good energy. I would love to continue this uh, high cadence and just solve it. Yeah, it would, be, it would be definitely positive. All right. Thank you so much. Sorry for going slightly over the time. Uh, thank you so much and uh, definitely see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.